Coming up on Mountain News at 6, after the drowning of a toddler in Laurel County, we'll talk to lifeguards on how to stay safe when going to the pool. And it is Men's Health Month. We'll talk to some hospital workers about what men can do to keep themselves healthy. It remains dangerously hot over the next day or so, but things are looking much nicer as we head into the weekend. The very latest details next at 6. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Yet another day of record-breaking heat in our region, but relief is coming just in time for the weekend. Meteorologist Evan Hatter tells us just how hot it got today. Evan? Well, we've beaten record highs again at both Jackson and in London, and there's our two climate sites where we, the National Weather Service keeps the records of record highs and lows and general uh, climate information. They got to 94 apiece today. That is three degrees higher than the record at Jackson and one degree higher than the record at London, which has stood since 1957. Historically hot outside. I-75 at Mount Vernon, we continue to see some low-level clouds kind of bubbling up there, not much in the way of anything. Trust me, that's not gray skies. That's just the latest image from our high knob camera at UVA Wise coming in. You can see actually some blow off from storms in the distance. And by in the distance, I mean in North Carolina because that's where the closest storms are. Low to mid 90s remain outside. It's 95 in Manchester and Jacksboro, still 93 hazard and Jackson and in Prestonsburg. It is still hot out there. Feels like upper 90s and lower triple digits. You see, you got to go all the way to North Carolina to run into anything that might cool us off. And yeah, maybe one little storm in the southwest Virginia, but the main action continues to be to our east, both north and southeast of us. So those heat safety tips, we've been talking about them. Make sure you uh, check up on the elderly, the sick, if people don't have air conditioning, light, loose-fitting clothes if you have to be outside, plenty of breaks in the shade, and uh, plenty of water as well. And always look before you lock. Never leave the pets or the kids in a hot car unattended. I'll have the latest on just how nice it looks to be as we head into a holiday weekend. I mean, I'm just a few minutes, Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. Cooling centers are still available in parts of eastern Kentucky as this heat wave continues. WIMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us how not and Floyd County officials are trying to keep people out of the dangerous weather. Finding ways to fight heat. We want to keep our, our people safe. Temperatures have stayed in the 90s all throughout this week. Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson opened two facilities as cooling centers in response. The last thing that we we want is our uh, uh, small children or elderly folks out here in the, in the uh, community to to be in a hot box pretty much all day with uh, it 100 degrees outside. Floyd County officials also opened the Floyd County Community Center for people in the area to take a break from the heat. They can get drinks, we can give them some water, and they can just come in and sit down and cool off for a while. And city workers stress the importance of routinely checking on those around you to make sure they are safe. If you live next to someone who is elderly or, or has a lot of small children and stuff, you know, please check on your neighbors, uh, make sure they're okay. Officials in both counties say they will continue to monitor the heat and offer ways out of it for people. In Knott County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. As we've been mentioning, temperatures are fortunately expected to temporarily drop somewhat this weekend. A utility company in Madison County is asking folks to conserve energy in this heat. Berea Municipal Utilities put out that alert. The company is requesting customers to cut back on electricity from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. during these 90 degree days. It's the peak time when consumption increases. After a two-year hiatus due to COVID-19 restrictions, the Perry County Fair is back and providing a unique series of events for Eastern Kentuckians. WIMT Zach Hawk is out at the fair at the Perry County Park with a look at what's going on tonight and some heat precautions they're taking there. Zach? Steve, so yeah, I'm out here at the Perry County Fair where organizers were telling me earlier they're, le they're uh, looking to build a very uh, unique experience. Judging by the kangaroos and wallabies behind me, they may have accomplished just that. 
so that the Perry County Fair can be a different type of fair than the other ones that Kentuckians get to experience across the region. Now, these professionals that are managing this Aussie Kingdom exhibit say uh, they brought kangaroos and wallabies and dingoes with them. Certainly not something we're seeing every weekend. And, you know, the fair has a lot more in store over these next few days. We have the usual food vendors and shops set up. There was also an extreme pogo event earlier, and there's still some live music to look forward to. But, of course, the heat is really keeping things a little quiet here so far. But organizers tell me they're prepared to keep people cool. So we want to warn everybody. It is. It's the last two or three days, tomorrow is going to be extremely hot. We set up some misting stations. We always have the pool open, and it's free for the public. But it may be a great day to take a dip in the pool and to cool down. Now, Steve, I got here at uh, about 3.30, 4 o'clock earlier this afternoon. Things were very hot. The sun was very high, and the crowd was definitely a little bit quiet at that time. But over the last two hours, I've seen a lot of people start flowing in. It looks like people are going to be coming in despite the heat, having a good time, enjoying everything they have on offer here at the Perry County Fair until it closes tonight at 10.30 p.m. Live in Perry County, Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. Well, I'm sure the pool will be a very popular attraction there, Zach. Thank you very much. We'll have more from the Perry County Fair during the next few days. Unfortunately, it is going to cool down a little bit for them going into tomorrow night and Saturday. Well, as the heat wave continues for now, many families are turning to the pool, but unsupervised children can find their way into bodies of water unexpectedly. Following the drowning death of a toddler in Laurel County yesterday, there's a renewed push for water safety. Shelby Lofton talked to swim safety instructors who say it's never too early or too late to learn how to swim. In the corner of a packed YMCA pool, life-saving practices are put into action amid excited screams and splashes. Every second counts. To prevent this kind of emergency, it's never too late. Um, to learn how to swim or too early. Can they put their face in the water? Can they blow bubbles? You know, can they float? Those are some of the life-saving skills children can learn. To help teach the parents what are some games and things they can do with their children to kind of continue to make the children uh, more comfortable around water. The techniques and safety tips learned in swim classes are put to the test outside of the community pool. So whether you're got a pond in the back of your you know, house or near a, near a park, whether it's a lake or somebody else's pool. Ensley says if a lifeguard is not on duty, make one person in the group a water watcher. Have somebody designated as that person that is keeping an eye on anybody in the water. She says their number one goal is to get a child used to the water so they can fall back on the skills they've learned no matter the situation. In Lexington, Shelby Lofton, WPYT. The YMCA instructor said they also offer swimming lessons for adults. A grand jury has indicted a Floyd County educator. 50-year-old April Bradford is facing a list of sexual assault charges. They stem from allegations between 1997 and 2007 with two victims who were minors. She was an assistant principal at South Floyd Elementary School. The Lexington Herald leader reports she was suspended after state police notified the district of the investigation. A warrant is now out for her arrest. Kentucky State Police released the names of two women found dead last night. The two were found in the Lost Creek community of Breathitt County. Police said 77-year-old Brenda Mullins and 76-year-old Sharon White were inside a home. KSP reports that one of the victims started a car that was parked in a garage below the home, causing both women to die of carbon monoxide poisoning. No foul play is suspected. Police are looking for two escaped inmates tonight. Take a look at your screen. They're searching for 30-year-old Logan Hall and 42-year-old Larry Foster in Pike County. Police say the two were on a work release crew. They walked off in the Coal Run community. If you have any information, you're asked to call police. In Whitley County, a murder suspect was due in court today. Nicholas Rucker is accused of killing his girlfriend in 2019. He made headlines earlier this year in connection with an attempted jailbreak. Investigators say he plotted an escape with a convicted murderer and with other inmates. 
This morning's hearing was for the murder charge. His attorney wants a judge to throw it out. The judge took Rucker's motion under advisement during the hearing this morning. No decision has been made yet. In Laurel County, police and other emergency responders were on the scene of an accident involving a car into a building, as you can see there. A vehicle crashed right through a business on South Laurel Road. Rescue units and firefighters secured the structural integrity of the building and removed the vehicle, then added more wooden bracing. The driver had minor injuries. We're told nobody else was hurt. It is Men's Mental Health Month, and health care providers are encouraging men to get their annual wellness checkups. WYMT's Jade Saylor spoke with nurses at CHI St. Joseph London about the difference a checkup can make. There are several illnesses and diseases men could be at high risk for. They're also less likely to see a doctor regularly, especially just for a well check. We see people come to us when they're sick, thankfully, but we'd like to see people when they're well so that we can keep them well. Healthcare workers are using June, Men's Mental Health Month, to urge men to get their annual wellness checkups. So some of the common things that we do in a well check for men is we set them up for colorectal cancer screening, which is preventable if found early. Testing for some things that men may be developing but never showing symptoms for. Also check for prostate cancer um, via a blood test it's not the way it always used to be. And so easy things that we can do to really protect the long-term health prospects. Using examples of perfectly healthy men that were diagnosed with easily treatable cancer found early due to a wellness check. Well, we were able to get him in with someone. They found it early. He didn't even have to undergo major treatment for cancer. Um, we probably bought him a long time. Healthcare providers say it's better to be safe than sorry. At least once a year, check in with a health professional. Make sure that you're up to date on your preventative screenings. Men are also less likely to go to the doctor when they are sick or for a wellness check than women. In London, Jade Saylor, WYMT, Mountain News. Some examples included in men's wellness checks include heart tests, blood pressure, colorectal and prostate cancer, cholesterol, and more. Well, coming up, uh, we've got a look at what we've got with the uh, heat on the way next. Plus, and I had the opportunity to sit down for a half hour with Eastern Kentucky's American Idol, Noah Thompson.